Hi. <laughs> it's going so slow. The air handler took us so long. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. It's true. Oh, I missed the whole thing. Are you still are you recording? No. Oh. Uh, you missed the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because you're not using oh, a you know, stay you know, right. Left. Nope. Because you're not using stay right anymore. You, you would have really missed the whole thing. Or I would have looked like I got the whole thing and then I would have leaked a day later. Good morning. It is Thursday, the 11th of April, uh, 7.51, and I'm on my way to... Our only job of the day, which is a replacement of an AC system. Uh, this customer has five or six central AC systems, um, all of which will now be replaced by, or have been replaced by Pipe Doctor. Uh, the first system that Mike had put in here was a carrier, but after that it's been Bosch IDS systems, and today it'll be a Bosch IDS system. So I think it's four Bosch's and one carrier infinity system, but it's in a pretty tight spot. I had a return box made for the unit to sit Go on. Past this light, then turn left onto um, Neptune Avenue. And the unit that we did last time was in like a similar tight situation, but this one's a lot tighter. It's in a closet that exactly fits it, so we'll see what happens. And there is Peter with our Bosch. Okay, hey, so here's our units. That's the one we'll be replacing right now. We're on the water, but I got a tent last time because we had to replace an air handler here a few days ago, or a week ago, uh, because it got flooded out. But we're gonna set this tent up, that way you keep everything dry. It's not supposed to keep raining, but it's drizzling a little bit. Okay, so we got the tent up. It gets pretty windy, so we strapped it down. With, uh, whatever these cheap anchors that came with, but I, I like this thing a lot. I got it for 80 bucks at Walmart. Well, Five Doctor got it for 80 bucks at Walmart, but it goes higher and lower if you need. But this isn't going to be too bad outside because we have all this room here, which we never had because we have all the line sets in the way, so we could put like the vacuum pump and everything here. So I'm going to pump this system down, pump the refrigerant into the unit, and Peter's gonna work on getting the door off inside. Here is the unit. But, uh, we're in the garage here. And we already, oh, a lot of junk here. We already did this unit in this closet here, which was tight, but Bosch unit. This one is tighter. So it like, you can see it just fits in here. And I got a new base made, but I am going to have to clear out in here. Cause I'm gonna have to get back where this piece of sheetrock is probably to uh, get to the back of the unit so we can get it all situated properly. But I don't think it should be too bad. Let's see. This coil is screwed on, so it shouldn't fall on us. I hope. Maybe we will strap it to the uh, wall when we disconnect it, but yeah. Nice rusty bottom there. So that'll be new. Okay, so I just pumped this system down into the condenser. It's R22. We could take the refrigerant out later at the shop. Um, rather just get it out of the way. I can now go inside to the air handler. We could disconnect our lines and we can work on getting that air handler out. Okay, I just pulled the coil out of the unit. Have to situate electrical. I shut the breaker off. There's our coil. Try to keep a neat pile of garbage. Peter is in here working on taking this drywall panel out. That way we can 
get to the back of the unit, which you can kind of see down through this return where he is. Just to kind of help us uh, with getting it in and out. But it looks like we are going to be able to pull this one out, no problem. But getting the new one in, we're going to have to take off this wooden molding here, which stinks, but it is what it is. Oh yeah. Nice. Okay, right, we're disconnected there. Are we taking the back? I don't know, you were back there. Not that I see, no. Should be able. Hang on, let me. Right there, we're stuck on the wood. There we go. Just slow with it because I don't want the. Oh no, you know what? The coil is supported by wood. All the way around. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Careful of the line set though. You're going to get caught. There. Oh, I thought you were going to smack it with the hammer. It's just in there, it's caught. Yeah, so smack it with the hammer. Yeah, like that. The whole thing. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Perfect. Should, should be okay. Ooh, heavy. Are you stuck on? The wood here. So that's not gonna. Oh, yeah, you got it. We it's fine. We broke it. We broke it. Yeah. We have we have to take this wood off anyway to get the new unit in. Probably should have done it a little bit beforehand, but whatever. It's going to need to be resealed because it's the return. Anyway. Okay. We're <sighs> stuck. Nasty. Return box. We're gonna get the area cleaned up and ready for the new box and the new unit. What these are, I have no idea. Some sort of muffler. Oh, maybe mufflers for the vacuum, the central home vacuum system. I have a mask on. People always tell me to put a mask on. I'm wearing one. Nice. Okay, so I just spent about an hour cutting off this wood. This wall doesn't do anything. It's just to divide the uh, vacuum room from this room, but I had to cut these pieces of wood, this up here, take out that shelf that was back there. Where's the wood from that shelf? Oh, it's in the garbage. Oh, we didn't need to throw it out. And now we can try to get our unit in. Uh, we were just shy of 22 inches all the way around. The old unit was a little bit smaller. So we got this in place and we should line up fine. Okay, we have our return plenum there. 
iron box and our unit and I ordered Uber. We're gonna get bacon, egg, and cheese bagels. And we gotta get the unit in place. And we have exactly half an inch shy of space. We actually need another half an inch, but we should be able to push everything. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I'm actually like inside the unit because it's uh, if I go in here, I could just stand and put the unit on my shoulders and kind of go up while Peter pushes us in. So, yeah, fun. There's the unit in place with the coil in and we're stopping to eat because I'm starving. Okay, so I have our line set pen made on our 7 8 line and our nitrogen hooked up. We are purging. See purge, and I'm gonna breeze these here. Just have to put deep blocking buddy. This is wet rag, so that we don't overheat the king valve a ton of it on there and I have a rosebud tip on the raising rig so I was having trouble getting the flame right at least right to where I like to have it and usually use it but i was running out of acetylene and while i was brazing the indoor unit i actually completely ran out and i had to use my b tank my turbo torch tip which was a little aggravating i ended up having a leak because of it it was hard to get it hot enough but whatever
<laughs> going so slow. The air handler took us so long. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race. It's true. Oh, I missed the whole thing. Are you still, are you recording? No. Oh. You missed the whole thing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because you're not using oh, uh, stay right. Nope. Because you're not using stay right anymore. You, you would have really missed the whole thing. Or it would have looked like I got the whole thing and then it would have leaked a day later. Hopefully I got the underside. They gave us the wrong head. They did? And we're gonna go up right in to the uh, line set right there. I know these aren't long sweep. Oh well, I'll survive. And heat blocking putty. Peter's just cutting off the exact length that we're gonna need. And then uh, we should be pretty much good to go. I'll connect the um, liquid line with the filter dryer inside uh where i'm gonna put that i don't know i might like kind of leave that at an angle that little line do the filter dryer and then come back in and go down okay so the line set is connected and there was a transformer in the old unit that i believe just powers this damper right here and this switch kills power to that transformer for that damper so you're not powering the transformer if you're not using the uh, damper to heat the garage or whatever um i pulled out this connector off the control board so you don't have to cap those wires and we have a whole mess of wiring it's insane how much wiring there is and a uh, rib relay for the hydronic coil and I'll show you what's happening outside. It's 3.15 right now. Vacuum at 713 microns. I'm gonna close the gas ballast. And you can see it starts to drop more rapidly. So, should be able to pull a good vacuum. We, we used the uh, Pro Flush solvent to remove the uh, oil from the system, as well as the um, pig, what do you call it? The uh, line, line wiper, line set wiper. So definitely got all the oil out because this was an old R22 system. So now, we're pretty much finishing off everything. Um, Peter's doing condensate. I finished electric. We're braze. We're pressure tested. We're vacuuming. Just have to connect electrical outside, really. Okay, so got the door back on. Here's the completed unit. So it came out nice. And rib relay which shows the led indicator if the heat is on and a trap can still access the filter and if you have a hard time even then accessing the filter you could disconnect this union right here and you can actually just pull it out of the way the condensate drains into a pump that's right down there which is the same one that this unit trains into. So this unit has all the wiring up top, which is what I was gonna do, because it's easier to, to service and things like that if you have all your low voltage connections here and they're all color coordinated and there's a little sheet that tells you what's what, but 
the switch had to go here. So I just did everything inside. I didn't feel like moving the switch around. Uh, filter dryer here with the liquid line following right in front of the suction line. And then a little 45 and then in. I think it came out nice. Nice enough for, for what we uh, had to deal with. Tight spot. It was real aggravating cutting this wall. Cutting the 2x4s all in half. You can see I got pretty crooked trying to cut it all. But we got just enough room. We're pinned up on the wall on this side and on 2x4 that are on that wall there. And here's all our scraps from that. Just had to cut a lot of wood out. And Peter's reorganizing his paint cans that are next to his boiler for his driveway heating. And I purged a couple times with nitrogen, so we're pulling down on our final vacuum. 327, 328, it's, it's bump, bumping up around a little bit, but we are pulling vacuum. <laughs> now we're not, but we were. Well, my phone died, but uh, we got it to, I think 117, but when I closed the valves and did the decay test, it came up to like 270, uh, which still passed, but usually we like to get it lower, but it's, I don't know, it's a super long run. That goes all the way across the house. I feel like we'd be here for a while trying to get it back down that low. I am working on the electrical. Normally we would change disconnect and whip, but we have like these generac systems hooked up and it's all f in fine still like waterproof condition there's some concrete on it but i am wiring it in with our surge protector here this is for outdoor use um and if you look right there you could see a little metal washer it's got this green rubber gasket that keeps it nice and watertight and it's nice and sturdy so i put the the uh, incoming line voltage in through the low voltage connection and use this for our our disc our normally will be our disconnect con connection for the surge protector and I'm just going to drill a new hole for our control wiring which is just R or just Y and C we're not hooking up any any of the other connections so I'll cap the other two off um yeah Okay, so I couldn't use wired or, uh, use Wagos because of how big and thick these wires were. So I used these super, super big wire nuts. And I, I electrical taped them because I don't like wire nuts. I want to make sure it's extra secure. I didn't put the ground because it's just ground. But I did my low voltage as well. One thing I don't like is how the low voltage and line voltage, there's no real like, separation everything is so close together and i feel like if something were to fray and like hit the board like that i mean you'd be done you need a new board but i am gonna apply power and we'll have this like weird delay thing from this oh uh, yeah this broke so i'm gonna have to zip tie it it's stupid that they made it out of some cheap brittle plastic but we got a refrigerant here. I'm gonna be adding two pounds, just based off of what I've had to add for the other units. Um, it's hard to know what the actual length is, and in the temperature right now, I can't charge by subcooling. So I'm gonna go with two pounds. We maintain his units regularly, so I'm gonna check the charge. If it's overcharged, I could always take it out come the summertime, or put uh, in more if need be come the summertime, but yeah, so we're ready to uh, get to charging, which is nice. We're finally finishing up. It is coming up on five o'clock. So typically we're out much earlier, but it's just me and Peter, and this wasn't a this was a rough one. So it is what it is. One really annoying thing is this pad is smaller than all the others. Why did they change the size? I don't know, but pretty cool four Bosch systems all lined up in a row like that.
and super quiet too. Okay, so we're pretty, um, all my last probably two pounds that I think I might have in this jug. Uh, hooked up my manifold, purged my uh, suction line, purged the uh, manifold itself, and then purged the refrigerant line. Um, just waiting for the system to actually kick on. The inverter isn't running right now, it's just the blower uh, condenser fan motor, which that should be inverter, I think. That sounded like it was inverter. Nope, not yet. Let's see. Can't do forced operation yet, but it says 58 on the display, which is the outdoor temperature. It will tell you when it kicks on the frequency that the compressor is running at. Um, and then you can press and hold on the switch up there. There's a button there that says force. And if you press and hold on that, it'll force it into the highest frequency. But I think there's a, I don't know, 10 minute delay time that the system has to start up before you can actually do that. So. Okay, and just charged it with two pounds. So, should be good to go. We're discharging nice and warm. See here, hear how quiet it is, it's crazy. Right now it's running at 39 hertz, so. It could go higher, but this is about what it's gonna run at most of the time, or lower. So, pretty cool. I mean, you could literally hear somebody whispering. You can hear the wind over the unit. And there we go, our evaporator pressure is coming back up. And there we have it. Four Bosch IDS 2.0 systems. <clears throat> Pretty cool, except for the lonely carrier. But if you look at it like this, it looks way better. Okay, so all in, that took us nine and a half hours, which is the longest install I think Peter and I have ever done. Uh, but we are now headed to Mocha, uh, Asian bistro place, uh, right by the office with uh, Mike, and we're gonna have dinner. And then I'll head home. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this turn video. Left, then turn right like the video road. if you liked it. Comment any advice or criticisms or feedback. And subscribe. Thanks for watching.